So good morning, everyone. Thanks again for being here. I really appreciate it. Um, hope um, everyone's having a great morning. Um, just a little poll of folks in the room. How many of you are kind of frustrated with the market right now? Just type a Y. Um, yeah. The topic for the day is trading a boring market. And I think everybody's feeling the same thing. We're, we're, we're frustrated um, with this market. And um, unfortunately, what we're trying to do, what a lot of people are trying to do, is continue to trade. We're not adapting to that. Oh, no, I, yes, I did start the recorder. <laughs> Um, trying to, um, we need to adapt to that market condition and realize that it is slow and try to figure out why it's slow. You know, one of, one of the things that I think has helped me be successful over so many years in trading is not because I'm special in any way. Um, it, it's because of my willingness to recognize that something in the market has changed. And I adapt my trading to that change. Okay. I, I mentioned, um, I keep bringing this up, but um, on this day, I mentioned in the YouTube, um, and I've been mentioning it all the time, to be real careful that there is a chance that the market could go into a consolidation. And it wasn't because of um, anything that I really saw in the market. It was just the experience of what has happened quarter over quarter over quarter lately. And that is this blackout period for corporate buybacks. And as we wait or come up on this on the next round of earnings, we're seeing an awful lot of these patterns, these resting consolidating patterns, sometimes are really choppy, sometimes are really whippy, sometimes they're really concise. But what it really is more than anything is we're losing breadth in the market because of this blackout period. Such a huge portion of the volume of the market now is incorporated in the corporate buybacks. If you think about <clears throat> last quarter, I think it was $100 billion in Apple alone, that they were going to spend $100 billion to buy back their own stock. Same thing was the month before, I think, or, or the quarter before, I think it was 90 billion. And, and spread that over all of these companies, just the massive amount of money that is pumping our volume of this market up because of corporate buybacks. Well, when they go into the blackout period, they're strictly prohibited from doing that. They can't. They can't buy. So consequently, we see um, things like market breadth really begin to fall heading in to that next round of earnings because they, they go into their blackout period. They're not allowed to influence the price of the stock at all as we head into that. And I described it as kind of like it, it's kind of like an eclipse. Because what happens is just a few start coming in, you know, they start going into the blackout. And then every single day, more and more companies slide into the blackout until we are in a total, total darkness in corporate buybacks. And then after earnings begin, we get this slow slide of more and more companies coming out from underneath that blackout 
and we start to see breadth in the market pick back up. Now, you combine this with the uncertainty that we are seeing in the geopolitical situation and, of course, um, an upcoming election, um, there is reason for all of that uncertainty here in the market. And when the markets are uncertain, we get these choppy conditions. And we can not only get these choppy conditions, but we can get these conditions where we suddenly get a big shot upside or big shot downside just all of a sudden because of something that happened in the news, um, something occurred. And we get this big sudden change in the market. And if you're over invested, meaning that if you're trading heavily one direction only, it can really hurt a lot when that kind of breaks that, that area. So I'm not gonna go with the term boring so much as, as um, a term more of uncertain. The, the market, it, it's pretty easy to see. We can see where the sellers are and we can see where the buyers are. And even though we get these gap ups and gap downs in the market, we get all of this, you know, whipsawing during the day and they're big point whipsaws, but we're not going anywhere. We continue to be stuck in this range and as long as we're stuck in this range, we need to modify the way we're trading. We can't come at the market with the same intensity because I would guess the frustration that a lot of people are feeling, and you tell me if I'm right or wrong, type, type a Y again. If the trades that you're buying right now, they look great, but they're just not getting any follow through. And it's because we don't have that momentum in the market. There'll be a nice buy signal that comes up and then it just fades back. We're just not getting momentum to, to follow through to the upside because of that uncertainty that we're seeing here. So what can you do during periods of time? And I've got a couple, couple things that I think are important. First off, um, Number one, start thinking about the strategies that work best in that kind of environment. And those are gonna be things like premium collection strategies. Things like using covered calls on the trades that you hold, bringing in premium, doing things um, to, um, to hedge those current positions for this stale period in the market using things like credit spreads, ratio spreads to um, bring in premium during these periods where the market are quite stale. Okay, And there's patterns out there that are certainly providing those. You know, one of our members um, went short, J&J. &J, and if you take a look at J&J, &J, that is a perfect trap short right there. But here again, even on the short side, even though we had that bearish push and that the uncertainty in here that's going on on the Middle East, we're still not getting f follow through. It's so difficult for stocks to go up and to go down right now that we're not getting much of that follow through to um, help help really make much money here in the market. So using things that are away from the price, a credit spread above, okay, to take advantage of that fade in time to pick up money in the market. So those are kind of strategies that work in a, in a so-called boring market or an uncertain market where we're just, we're spinning in a circle, we're building some energy. I, I, the longer you consolidate, 
the longer you consolidate, that the more you have a chance of a really big sharp move to the upside or a sharp move to the downside. So it's coming. But the problem that we have in such a tight consolidation like that on the diamonds, the problem that we're going to deal with, or any of these indexes that we're going to deal with, is it's about a 50-50 chance. I would, I would put just a little bit of edge to the bullish side because we're still holding bullish trends. Okay, except for the Russell. IWM is not holding a bullish trend. It's now confirmed short-term downtrend but other than that and it's still in an upside trend the short-term downtrend is down the longer term is still up so again we're just waiting on some kind of inspiration and you can avoid a lot of that frustration by recognizing that by recognizing that situation and adapt your trading to it one thing is pull back don't do as much trading. If we trade a boring or a choppy in certain market like this aggressively, we just get chopped to pieces, right? We put out all of these trades, they're not following through, we're taking, we're not really taking huge losses or anything on trades, but we're not making any ground. We, we start stacking up more losses than we do wins because we don't recognize that that condition, at least for this period of time, has changed. Okay? And that is one of the reasons why I do the market prep, morning market prep. And I was talking about this in right way option. Someone was asking how to avoid head fakes in the market. And, you know, every day for about two weeks now, I've suggested to everyone market breadth is weak we're likely to continue to be a choppy market trade. But then we all have, we, we, you might even listen to that and agree with that. But as soon as the market opens and you see something like a bullish candle pop into a trade, you cannot resist. You forget about the market condition and you jump on the trade. And that was a real problem for me in my trading. I, I tried to trade every single day as if every single day was the same. Every single day is not the same. The market. We have to adapt to that market condition and really start thinking about how to maintain that discipline when the market is like this and stale to pull back on the amount of trades we are taking, to be a bit more on the conservative side, standing there waiting for the good trades, okay? So things that you can do is you can start going through, spend more time going through charts, analyzing the setups and analyzing the trends, looking for those potential trades that could be coming and waiting. Now, when I say wait for them, I truly mean wait for them. In an uncertain market, if you anticipate a trade, if you think you know something the market doesn't know before the market shows it to you, you got about a 50-50 chance of losing money. Okay? So when you identify those trades, there's a couple of things that I repeat over and over and over. The best trades, and we don't need lots of trades. The best trades are always going to be those ones that show us that pattern that are near support and near trend. So you can see this trade right in here may have another week of resting to get to the trend and I have to be willing to wait for that I have to be willing to be patient because if I jump on the first white candle that shows and then it stalls 
And what if it does this the next time? Then you're stopped out. Because we're still stuck in this range. If I don't apply my what I see in the market condition, the trades that I'm looking at and realize that I have to be ultra picky in a, in a situation like this, so I don't stumble into too many of these trades and really hurt myself before the actual move occurs. Anybody ever had this situation that by the time the market actually moves for you, you've been beaten up so much in your trading that you're not capable of making those trades? Anybody ever been in that place? Or the market just hammers you down and hammers you down and hammers you down and hammers you down and hammers you down. And, you down. and by the time the market moves, you can't trade. You've been so beat up. You've lost your confidence in what you do. You're tossing about and you miss the opportunity. Yeah, no kidding, John. Happy to get out of break even. <laughs> so sometimes we have to be ultra picky about our trades. Well, it's it's not really analysis paralysis so much, Centuri, is, is we get our confidence, we, we get our egos hurt. We get our, our account as being hurt. It's bleeding. And, and we've taken so many trades that head faked us that by the time the market makes the turn, we've got no confidence left to take those trades. Okay, so a couple of things that can really help that is, once again, make sure the chart is trending. Okay, be primarily focused on charts and trades that are moving with the direction of the overall market. If, if the market is showing you bullishness, don't try to be a bear on everything. It's okay to have some bearish trades, but don't try to be a bear on everything be mostly long and looking and favoring the long side until something proves that it's not. But on the same side, if the market is bearish, that's a problem that a lot of traders have. We're not in a bearish market right now. Let me make that clear. But if the market is bearish, all we want to look at is long trades. Okay. And in a, in, a, in a condition like this, if the market is bearish and the only thing we're looking for is long trades, we can literally brainwash ourselves into thinking that the market is better than it is. And then we make these stupid mistakes that cost us quite a bit of money. Okay, Think about this for a second. And we know this is true that 80 plus percent of the market, 80 plus percent of the money in the market, and some say it's 84, 85 percent right now, of the money that's in the market is controlled by the institutions. So of all of the money, the trillions of dollars that are in the market, it's controlled by the institutions. Now think about this. If we're not getting these indexes moving here, Okay. Even the institutions are uncertain here. They're showing us that because the breadth of the market is falling and we're not breaking any of these patterns yet. The market is uncertain. Even the institutions are holding back saying, there's nothing we can do here just yet. But as we as retail traders that come in and turn on our computer in the morning, if we don't do that market analysis to know where the market condition is, and then hold to that and say, I've got it, I've got to temper my trading to this because the next bullish engulfing candle that shows up, oh my gosh, I got to hurry and jump on that. 
we're creating our own problem. Okay? And believe me, I've got tons and tons of experience of doing that. Of just suffering way too many losses and way too much bleeding during times like this because I wasn't willing to stop. I wasn't willing to back off. And, and I got to tell you, I haven't made, I haven't made a trade and I trade really quick futures charts. I haven't made a trade this week in futures because when it does start to move, it's really choppy. The risk that you have to take to get involved in it is too high on even a really fast chart. I'm not trading it because the breadth of the market is so weak. It can flip and turn on a dime. Institutions continue to trigger these back and forth moves in this range. How can we stay in a range like this but see the market move so much? Think about it. Institutions make money also based on transactions. If they can push the market back and forth, keep it in this range, if they can push the market back and forth and get people to jump into trade and create transactions, they make money. And if we're not willing to recognize that, then we're subject, we're, we're gonna be the one being the contributor. And is that making sense, guys? So when you see these charts and trades, be a little bit more stringent on what the pattern is doing. Where is the setup? Could it be here? Sure. Would there be anything wrong if it's all the way over here? No. So be willing to wait for it. Be patient on those trades. Now, setting price alerts, I say this all the time, is make the trade come to you, but always remember the market condition. Okay? I've got an alert here on CLF. I really like this chart. I think there's a really good chance CLF could be moving to the upside. But why am I not in it after it popped right there because I remembered the market condition and I exercised the discipline saying I'm gonna wait be patient here and I'm glad I've done that we're back down into the congestion zone of this. there's nothing wrong with it if I were trading this you guys know I'd still be holding it no problem there but if we had another day, any kind of a stumble in here and this drops down through here, I'm stopped out. Just another small loss. It's death by a thousand paper cuts. It's really painful and it's a very slow bleed. So I have to be patient in this, this market. And the other part of it so I have to be willing to let trades go. If they do pop and I don't take them and they start running, that's no excuse for me to chase them. Just wait for the next entry. All right, okay. So good exercises that you can be doing during times like this is refining your rules. Building watch lists of trades that you're interested in that could be setting up. Mark them up. Where's the trend? Where is, I didn't mean to drag that whole line, but where is the trend? Where is the support? Where would be a good entry? What kind of upside potential do they have? Place those alerts and be willing to wait. Don't anticipate. Think about the things that are happening in the world today. Do you think you can anticipate all of these different events and how the market's going to react to those events? 
and do it ahead of the market, that we can outsmart all of this stuff? Well, I know for me, that answer is no, I can't do it. So to stay on the right side of my win-loss ratio, I have to be more disciplined. Okay? I have to be more concise on the trades that I pick. I only want to take trades that are really low risk entry during the market condition like this. I, you know, I added to a trade yesterday. I love this round and bottom breakout pattern that could be setting up and it's punishing me today. It's still in the pattern. Okay, it's still in the pattern. But I added to that candle right here and I want you to notice something. If I come over here, it was away from trend. It wasn't there yet. Okay, so I do the same thing as everyone else does. But that's the only thing I added. And I didn't have to risk much money on it because it's a really cheap stock. Okay, there's nothing wrong with this chart. I'm just having to suffer right now through the drawdown hasn't broken any stops, hasn't done anything like that. I now have to wait it out to see if it's going to go. Okay. That's the early entry. What about missing it? Okay. When I took a look at PayPal, you guys know I've been talking about PayPal, maybe coming up out of this bottom and I had an alert right here. I didn't like the market condition. I chose not to trade it. Okay, that was my choice not to trade it. it. Was near support, it was near trend, I didn't trade it. But I don't agonize over this. And I don't chase it. Because I know if this chart is gonna continue to trend, it's going to provide another opportunity. Just wait for it. You have to be willing to miss those trades that just run and chase. Because when you chase those trades, you often end up being on the wrong side of that trade when it's over because the reversals can be ugly. So just wait for the next entry into the trade. Be disciplined on how you enter trades. Make the trades come to you. Be very close to price support and price trend. If it's not there, don't trade. take it. Here's a great example right here. The big stretch up, consolidate a little bit, there's your pop. It's not near trend and look what happens. You get stopped out. Okay, get stopped out. Why? I get more touches to that trend. If you can show me a way that I can get more price action touches to a trend in here, you tell me what it is, I'll be glad to change it. But I, that's where I get the most touches to the trend. In fact, wouldn't you say if you're using this trend here, this trend is broken. Because this was the support of that trend and that trend has failed. Does that make sense? This lowest low in here you can see how we've shot down and then gap back through. It's kind of, it's one of those things you get that volatility that comes up in the market. And every once in a while, the market gets so volatile, you'll see those points that stretch out beyond the normal trend. Okay, it's kind of an aberration in the market. You can choose to use them if you want. 
I look for the most touches. If I try to put a trend right in here, I get two touches. Maybe I can come up there and get three like that. And it's fine if you want to do that. I just prefer to look for the place where I can get more confirmation to the trade. I get more touches in that trend right here. So it's it's up to you. It's based on the the eye of the the eye of the trader. But even in that circumstance, this still has to pull back. Even if you use these, this still needs to pull back, right? So so you wait for it. So look for those trades that give you low risk entries in, in markets like this. You want the lowest risk entries you can find. Because we know when the market is kind of a 50-50 bet, whether it's going to pop out to the upside or pop down to the downside, the more trades we put on, take additional risk of those being wrong. Okay, Because even the market itself doesn't know. Institutions are saying we don't know what's going to happen next. So we're just kind of parking cash and waiting. And you guys have all heard that story out there, that rule, right? That you don't over trade a boring market anybody feel like you've been kind of guilty of over trading a boring market get that gap up in the morning or that gap down in the morning and then we start rushing and oh my gosh I gotta hurry up and that fear of missing out kicks in and we forget about the market condition and then we end up regretting it get too many losses that happen and something I was discussing in RWO that I know was true for me and I know it's true for other folks that I've worked with when you suffer a whole bunch in here chop 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 how many of you guys would say you, you've had a lot of head fakes here lately you get head faked long and then it draws back. It really doesn't do anything bad. It just draws back. You're head faked into the trade. Okay, it's not really doing anything. And if you do that enough times on a consolidating period like this, then what happens when it finally does move? You've lost your confidence to trade. Right? Because now I can't, I can't trust this. It's, it's beat me up so many times I can't trust it. Lost your confidence to trade and then you truly do miss the opportunity. And I got to tell you guys, I've done that so many times. I can't even tell you. That I would get so overly beat up over a period of time, lose my confidence in what I was doing when it did finally come around. I wasn't there. I wasn't ready. Is I was still patching up the holes from all the leaks <laughs> and the bleeding that was going on um, for because I wasn't recognizing the market condition. Okay, so think about those things carefully when you're working through these price patterns in the market. Build good watch lists. It's a good time to study. It's a good time to refine. It's a good time to work on your rules. It's a really good time to build, you know, those good quality watch lists, find trends. I need stocks that are trending and I'm just waiting for the next entry. You're waiting for the market to find that catalyst to get moving. Okay. And when it happens, it'll happen quick. Likely it'll happen quick and we'll have to be ready for it. Right. Until that period of time, try to pull back on your trading. Try to work on premium collection strategies. Another thing that I did yesterday is added in some covered, I added a covered call on a trade um, to take advantage of something that had stretched up. 
UEC here. It did make a move up. And so to protect myself, I added a cover call to hedge that. Oh, wait, you guys aren't seeing what happened here. Are you seeing? Oh, yeah, you're seeing. Okay. My end. Well, there's not really a list of market breadth signals, Tammy. Market breadth is, is an indicator, just like any other indicator in the market. Um, but what it does show us on market breadth is when the market is, uh, when the breadth is declining. So right now we're in a bullish market. Diamond Spy and QQQ are still definitely in a bullish market, okay, bullish patterns, but we're not moving, okay. So when we see that we're in a bullish pattern, but breadth is continuing to decline, we're not getting the momentum that we need to push out of that consolidation, okay. We're actually seeing a little bit of a hook up here today but what's the condition of the market today? It could be that the bears are starting to gain some confidence here and they're willing to push a little bit harder right now. If we start moving breath up on a bearish day, that should all give us a potential caution or warning that maybe the bears are taking over. Okay, now this doesn't apply to any individual stock. It's the market as a whole. It's that it's looking at what is going on in the in the momentum of the market. That momentum has been fading for almost two weeks. Um, there's nothing in TOS to look at for this that I know of. Um, not like this anyway. There may be something there. I just, I don't know what it is and I, and I couldn't advise you on how to read it. Yet this is in TC2000. I used, I've used it for so long. It's just what I do, but market breadth is very, very important. And when it coincides mm -hmm. with a market that has been overextended and we were seeing that in the T2122 the T2122 get that on the daily we were lingering up here in that bearish reversal zone we're going down there's all of this hope that the rate cuts are going to turn things around and then they might but right now we're not getting the momentum to follow through with that move so when we've got momentum high and starting to fall and we've got t2122 kind of at the top level up here naturally i start to expect some kind of a rest or pullback in the market and notice right here we're relieving a lot of that overbought pressure but we're not moving market's not moving up there's just enough stocks moving down that we're relieving that overbought pressure in the market. So if we do get that bullish inspiration in here, well, we've opened up a big opportunity for an upside move. Okay. So, and, and, and it's okay if you don't have this, Tammy, um, all I gotta do is watch the morning market prep. I do it every day. All right. Um, of, what's happening here in the market. And by me adapting to the market condition, um, if you go back into the videos starting um, a week ago Monday, you're gonna hear me say, hey, stay with the trend, but start raising your stop losses. Tighten up, maybe start thinking about taking some profits. because everything was elevated. 
that should also give you a clue. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe I shouldn't be thinking about just buying a whole bunch of long trades. Maybe I need to start backing off and waiting for that pullback or start looking at some potential shorts. Or maybe I sell some covered calls to hedge my positions. Maybe I look at some credit spreads or, or ratio spread trades to get away from price and be able to profit if the market just stagnates. Okay. So I do this every morning and it's for me. I just happen to share it to, for everyone. Um, I did the morning market prep long before I started publishing it on YouTube is it helped set my mentality for the day. How do I approach this market today? My old mentor used to say there's there was only about 10 days. And, and let me just explain my my mentor has never held a job has made her entire living for all of her life trading. Now, that's somebody I think I should listen to. Said that there's only about 10 to 15 days in any given month that's a good day to buy. The problem is you never know when those 10 or 15 days are going to be unless you're studying the condition of the market. Okay. So we need to think about those things and think about in these challenging market conditions, what are we doing that's causing our own problem? If we keep approaching the market because we're stubborn, I'm stubborn, I just want, don't tell me this garbage, I just want to trade. Doggone it, get out of my way. But when we take that attitude and we suffer these drawdowns and we keep doing it over and over, then it's time to fess up that something's wrong here and I've got to change. I've got to adapt to this changing condition and change up how I'm trading, at least for the moment, until conditions improve. Okay. When there's a hurricane coming, we don't plan a trip to the beach, right? We have to adapt our plans and our schedule because something has changed. The same thing is true in the market. The weather has changed. We've gone stale. We've gone stagnant. We're waiting on something. And so we have to adapt to that or we create our own problems and our potential losses in the market. But you can still be productive. And see, to me, productive means more than just trading. A lot of people look at the activity in the market. They're just trading and trading and trading and trading and trading. That's productivity, but it's not. If you're not winning the majority of those trades, it's not productive. It's activity, but activity doesn't equal results. Okay? So if the results aren't happening, how can we still be productive? Well, we've got to look to how to adapt to that market condition. Can we use credit spreads? Can we use ratio spreads? Can we be more productive by spending some time developing our trading plan a little bit closer, reinforcing our rules, building a list of trades that could be setting up, looking at those prices and patterns in here that could be setting up, trying to be more stringent to the trades that we take and being developing those lists of trends. swimming in yeah that's true there are there are those people that there's always that exception to the rule <laughs> you know i was out camping 
um was that a was that a week ago two weeks ago i was out camping in a little tiny tent got down to 36 degrees <laughs> Certainly possible that there's that exception to the rule, but for the most of us, that's not going to be the case. And we need to think very carefully about how we're approaching that market. And I can be productive and I can be improving my trading business during those periods of time. As a matter of fact, I see those periods of time as found time where I can learn more about my trading software. I can learn more about my um, charting software. I can clean stuff up, clean up my charts, get everything straightened out, get more productive in doing the things to improve my business so that when the time does occur, I'm ready for it. Okay. GLD shows another confusing trend line. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't see that. For the longer, the shorter term, we've got a little shorter term up here that was right here, but that's failed. So now it's coming back to the longer. That's uh, what John is saying there is, is the perfect example of if you're struggling with just drawing up your charts, now's a really great time to get in there and start working on it. We can be productive even in markets like this. We can improve our business and trading if we utilize times like this rather than just chasing and chasing and chasing trades hurry up to get into another bad trade can really get us in trouble fast. You know, since I've been talking, you know, we were going up when I started. The market was improving. Everything was getting better. Take a look at the futures right now. We haven't changed anything. We're just chopping in the same range over and over and over. And if we don't recognize that, if we don't adapt to that, then we end up creating losses that we didn't need to have. Okay. And it, it was always stubbornness for me because I always thought, well, I'll show you. Um, um, that didn't work out well, I can tell you that. <laughs> Yeah, um, I, I agree, Ed. Um, the hardest thing I ever did was knock that chip off of my shoulder, look at myself in the mirror and say, pal, you're screwing this up. I would blame the market. I would blame the volatility. I would blame the politics. I would blame everything but me. Oh, the indicator let me down. Oh, the strategy let me down. Oh, this, it was me every time. And the only way I fixed that is I did hard reviews of every trade that I made. Where was the mistake? I looked for my mistakes. And that's that inward process that I think traders have to go through eventually to be successful long-term in the market because you've got to change. Okay. If you've been married more than two years, you know what I'm talking about. There's not a guy in here or a woman in here that doesn't know how to push the buttons to make things pretty rough in the household, right? You learn pretty quickly, okay, don't touch that button. 
that's gonna, <laughs> that's gonna cause me some trouble and heartache. I don't want that. I don't want to push that button. Have to learn those same same things in our trading. <laughs> that's right. The Possum Lodge, Red Green's Prayer. I am a man, but I can change if I have to. I guess. We all have to face that and make those adaptions and change. Um, and this is just one of those challenging market conditions. There's nothing wrong with these charts. The charts are bullish. At least for now, they're still bullish. We just have no energy and no momentum. And if we don't recognize that, we just chop ourselves up frustrated we just want to trade doggone it just i just want to trade the problem is when we get that feeling we're usually chasing or we're usually over trading our account and again activity does not equal results so i hope you guys got something out of this a little bit different class today Hope you got something out of this conversation. Um, it's not the sexiest thing, but it is an important thing. And the sooner we recognize that we have to move with the market rather than force ourselves on the market, because it won't move because I trade. It won't be if all of us in the room traded one thing, if we all went into into one of these big techs and said, yeah, it's a, it, it won't make any difference. Bug that the market can step on really easy because we're so small. So all we can do is adapt and work with the market condition. Okay. You guys have a great afternoon. I want to wish you all the best. Thanks, Larry. Appreciate it. Um, I believe John is up next. I'll give you a little break before John comes on. Um, take care. Be safe. Oh, you're welcome, everyone. Hope you got something out of it. Take care. Be safe. And I will see RWO members back over to do the wrap-up for the day. Wish you all the best, everyone.